Thank you, Kelly. Got to remember to unmute myself. Uh, welcome everybody to our Get Em Home Huddle about um, the boring stuff. Unfortunately, challenge requirements, but obviously a very important topic in with regard to participating in the challenge. We start every huddle with a story, so I'm going to do that today. Um, today's story is about Milo, and Milo, just by looking at him, isn't necessarily what you would traditionally think of as a long stay pet. Um, he came to us as a tiny little bottle baby and he got very sick at about six weeks of age and we found out he was FIV positive and as I'm sure many of you um, can understand at a time of the year when there's a ton of kittens around many people were, re were reluctant to adopt an FIV positive kitten. So Milo stayed with us for quite a while while and we uh, advertise I shouldn't say advertise but we promoted an educational campaign about FIV and that these cats can live long healthy lives and uh, one day this lovely couple came to the mall adoption event that we had Milo at and found him and fell in love and weren't afraid of FIV and adopted Milo and he went to a, a very lovely home so a great story of Milo about adopting out cats that can be perceived to have challenges as well as um, utilizing special events to, to find homes for pets. Move on and talk about requirements. The um, just refreshing your memory of the challenge timeline because the challenge timeline relates to requirements. Right now we're right about um, right about here in the timeline in terms of the registration phase with our challenge starting on October 1st. I would guess that everybody who is watching this presentation has already registered, but if you haven't already registered, that is the first step in, in being prepared for this challenge and participating in the challenge. But there's a couple other steps that we'll talk about today. Data and reporting. Many of you um, probably feel like this when we talk about data and reporting, like you're trapped in a cage and, and desperately want to get away from that data. But some of you might feel a little differently about it. Some of you might be like me and absolutely love data and it puts a giddy smile on your face, but I'm guessing I'm in the minority there. In terms of data, I want to remind you all that in terms of qualifying for prizes related to the challenge, you need to be an organization that primarily houses pets in a, a physical facility. And it's all about finding homes for pets with length of stay more than 30 days. And you need to complete all three of the surveys. So the registration, which you probably already completed, and then the next two surveys, which I will be talking about here. Reminder that you can visit the Get Em Home Challenge webpage and there's a related link section on the right where you can see sample surveys to remind yourself about what you're going to need to submit. There's also a nice sample project plan with suggestions about things you can and maybe should be doing with regard to planning for this challenge. Let's talk about the registration survey. So I'm um, going to go through this very, very briefly because as I said, most people have already submitted, but these were the items that are in our registration survey. want to point out that there are optional questions. So these are required information at the top, but this bottom information are optional questions. You don't have to answer these bottom questions to participate and registration closes next Monday. So it's coming up soon. Our starter challenge data submission survey. So this is our effort to get to know who is in your population at the start of the challenge. So the total number of dogs and cats with a length of stay over 30 days who are in your custody on September 30th, 2018. So in this particular survey, which you will be receiving a link to, we're going to be asking for this information, and then you're going to be emailing the report as an attachment to this email address. You don't need to write that down. It'll, there'll be information in the survey itself. I know it's a, not a pretty um, or easy to remember email address there, but that will submit your report directly to our file. So essentially an inventory report that's going to include information like pet name, ID number, species, sex, intake date, or number of days in custody, and their um, 
status on the day that the report was run in terms of where they are. And due October 8th, so we, you have a week from the first day of the challenge to get that report done. And then the end of challenge survey. So this survey is one that you will complete at, after the three month challenge period ends. So it can be submitted um, anytime January 1st through the end of the month of January. So you have the entire month of January to get this done. And we wanna see the total number of dogs and cats with that length of stay who are adopted during the challenge. So a pet could have reached a 30 day length of stay two weeks into that challenge and you found a home for it. Yes, that pet does qualify and should be included in your total number and in your report. So we want the outcome reports regarding the dogs and cats who met this criteria of length of stay who are in your custody during the, the time period. And, oops, sorry, jumped ahead of myself. And their outcome or current status at the end of the period. And we want the same thing, there will be a specific email address to submit that report to. We want the same type of information in terms of name, ID, ID number, status. It's okay if there's more that you have a standard report that you use and there's more information than that on the report, but those are the, the minimum information we need in that report. And then optional items to submit. So submitting those first items will get you enter, entered into to win one of 10 $1,000 grants if you submit up to this portion. Sharing this additional information will uh, make you eligible to win other awards. We are hoping that some of you will share stories about memorable long stay pets who were adopted because we love to hear about stories. And there are also specific awards, which we talked about in the last huddle, related to creative adoption or foster tactic, 